Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Yeah, but a lot of my time here lately has gone to uh, doing stand-up. Oh, okay, very cool. How, 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 how did this stand-up thing come along? The reason why I'm asking, that was kind of always my secret dream. I always wanted to be yeah. Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <You know? laughs> if I could, like, yeah. if I could press a button and have any career, you know, I would go for comedian. But Lola says I'm not funny, mostly because <laughs> when I'm trying to tell jokes, I crack my own self up. Which yep. I guess is not like I've looked at some of your because uh, if anyone goes to uh, it's John Hickok is your channel, right? Right. So if you guys go there, you've got some uh, snippets of, of your stand up routine. You are super serious yeah, when jokes. you're when you're doing your routine. I know. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's just like yeah, kind of a little bit dry. I guess is how I am. Yeah. Yeah. But. No, I think that's good. I was looking at it, I was thinking, I was like, oh, that's what you're supposed to do to be funny. You can't be telling your own jokes and laughing at your own stuff while you're telling it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and everybody has a different style, you uh -huh. know, like, uh, like look at, like, Norm MacDonald versus Dane Cook. Yeah. As, like, the opposite ends of the spectrum, mm -hmm. you know, on that. Yeah. It's... But, yeah, I got, I've always been a fan of stand-up, and, mm -hmm. uh. And kind of like you, I want, always wanted to try it, but never like had the guts to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, one of the things that like helped me pull the tr trigger on it was when uh, I started doing more videos on the main channel and stuff. And I realized that like, you know, I'm I no matter what happens, like there's always going to be Hickok 45 videos made, whether Dad's doing them or I'm doing them mm -hmm. down the road. Uh, but people are always going to see me as his son and compare me to him, mm -hmm. no matter what. It could be a hundred years from now, mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> you yeah. know. Uh, I'm, you know, embodied in a Android Google made <laughs> you know, laser guns. Yeah, they're still they're making money. Yeah. You might as well just three D three D scan them. Still man. bring up my dad. They're gonna be like, yeah. "Where's your dad?" But you know, why, why didn't they bring him back with the new technology? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I was like, I gotta, I gotta do something that is completely like just kind of on my, my own, and that was what kind of helped me, uh, you know, make that leap. And then once I got into it, then I was hooked. Okay, so um, what were like what were your influences as comedians, and what was the thing like? How did you actually first uh, get on get on stage? Was that in school? How how did that happen? Uh, well, I first started like about four and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. it was the first time I went up at an open mic. Uh, yeah, I was always into uh, like George Carlin and uh, Bill mm -hmm. Hicks and Bill Burr, okay. Louis C.K. Aside from the you know stuff, he, uh, aside from all the controversy, he's one of the greatest mm -hmm. uh, uh, stand-ups of all time. Just mm -hmm. just pure when it comes to like purely stand-up, like his writing and stuff is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Norm Macdonald, of course, and, uh, and a bunch of younger up-and-comers I really like too, like uh, uh, Mark Norman and uh, Tim Dillon, uh, Andrew Schultz. If you know about some of those mm -hmm. guys, but. Um, some of them sound familiar. I don't know. You guys could tell me. I mean, obviously, Norm Macdonald. I'm from the '80s, man. I'm kind of old. Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably closer. <laughs> I'm probably closer to your dad's age than your age. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm kind of old school. So I'm kind of like probably a Norm Macdonald kind of guy, you know, in, yeah. in that vein. So. Right. Yeah. So where did yeah, you I'll, go ahead? I was say I just always liked the just the good writing. You know, the really good writers mm -hmm. and. and jokes punchlines mm -hmm. and I, i've never been as crazy about where it's just like funny stories you know what i mean it's like i want jokes mm -hmm. you know and that's kind of hard right too oh, okay okay so um so now for the folks out there so you're you're doing this professionally i'm assuming right no no no, oh, no. okay that takes a long time it takes like 10 years for most people to be professional okay like i've gotten paid doing comedy of course but it's mm -hmm. not i couldn't do it full time if i wanted to oh okay on what frequency do you do it are you every day once a week almost, almost every night yeah. every night oh Ow. okay just about every night yeah oh well at least before the uh the lockdown the, oh okay <laughs> uh, yeah yeah i was gonna say um so uh walter why are you showing us paper just toilet paper. Come, it comes just, packed yeah, with you. You haven't uh, seen that already? You, it comes packed with your ammo now. From the ammo boxes. And, <laughs> oh, you're going to uh, use that paper from the ammo boxes to clean? Yeah, that's right. Okay, you got a little you, bit of Russian recycle. Some kind of Russian you know? disease. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Russian corona. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Um, that's not. I don't think that's going to work. I don't think that's going to work, Walter. That's kind of well. Smart. Yeah. That's I got a little bit more. Usually, I need a little more surface area than this right here. Yeah. Well, what about what about those little like cardboard things that sometimes ammo comes in where it's yeah. like, you know, what I'm yeah. saying it's like this. Oh my gosh! No, no, no! Just go get some together. leaves from outside, please. <laughs> Good leaves, okay? Go old school. Uh, so where can people... So you're saying you're going on stage every night. Where Are you doing that at one place? Are you doing it? Or... So this is like... Uh, mostly, I'm, I'm what we would call an open micer for the most part because most, most of my stage time comes from open mics. Mm -hmm. And I do shows like... Uh, it kind of varies. Like Sometimes I'll go on the road and I'll do like you know five or six nights in a row of shows mm -hmm. uh, or I may go a couple weeks and not have a show mm -hmm. uh, or it'll be like once a week or every two every week. It's, just, it's sort of random right now because I'm not like on the circuit mm -hmm. yet. Okay. Uh, I'm kind of working my way in. Uh, okay, uh, do you but, do, um, I have to say, I have to ask these questions. Do you do tall jokes? <laughs> I do. I have, I have two in my act actually, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and do you pick on little people? <laughs> uh, not, not, not yet. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so eventually, want to have good enough depth for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, what is the like? What is the career path for that? I don't know. How long have you been doing um, every night? And what is the path for that? Do you just do it until you get an agent, or um, how exactly? Uh, it's, it's like a few different ways, especially nowadays mm -hmm. with like new media and stuff. Uh, as far as how long I've been doing it, so I've been I started four and a half years ago, and as far as the, like going up almost every night. Uh, that's definitely that's been solid for like the past two years mm -hmm. and it's been kind of a gradual on and off build up you know because uh, the first year or two like you're still kind of trying to figure out if you think you're going to be able to do it or not it's a it's you know it's it's rough it's mm -hmm. a rough thing to subject yourself to mm -hmm. if you aren't like insanely determined to do it you know yeah that's uh that's, that's and, serious uh, mm -hmm. it is it's it's a big commitment because the thing is like open mics are four minute sets so you know, you're bouncing around different because i'm usually doing multiple spots a night mm -hmm. and you're bouncing around in different bars you're waiting like hours watching you know brand new people trying it on their new year's resolution and stuff doing hack jokes from memes and you just got to right. watch it over and over and over and then you're like exhausted by the time you know you even go up and you've still got to focus and work on your new stuff and you got to write every day it's like it's a huge undertaking that people don't really realize until they get deep enough into it yeah it, looks, it seems like it's a real craft <clears throat> and a real profession do you do what's uh go ahead what's the writing process like yeah. how long does it take you to to come up with ideas oh it's writing as hell I, I love it but it's tough it's like mm -hmm. um it's either there's kind of like two aspects there's like i'm trying to come up with something completely out it happens in three ways uh, at least for me and i think most people could, would have this experience uh, they're sitting down, staring at a blank page, just just trying to come up with stuff, like thinking about something you're interested in, like or what's funny about that, just completely like out of the blue. That's the hardest way, but you kind of have to do that, you know, if, if you're going to really like have some volume of material. Mm -hmm. um, and then one of the other ways is you write on, you work on stuff you've already got, right? So you already have a joke, and then you add a line to it, and you build it, you know, and add things to it, and it's like. Like kind of like a tree, you know, just like little branches, you know, and uh, all that kind of stuff. And then uh, one of the other ways is it just comes to you spontaneously. Like you'll just be having a conversation. You'll be like, oh, that's funny. And then you write it down and <laughs> maybe you can do something with it or whatever. Uh, or you just be taking a shower and you think of something and, and you're like, oh, that's good. So you have to repeat it in your head over and over for the next 10 minutes of your shower so you can write it down and get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've forgot stuff like, oh, man. Oh, like, have so you ever, have you ever forgotten something? important before I don't, this, i'm sure this isn't just a comic thing like you forgot you remember thinking of something and then you thought about a bunch of other things and realized like oh that you forgot that thing so you literally like had to retrace like 15 minutes of thought mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. try to go back yeah and find yeah that idea and just to find that it sucked <laughs> that drives me that drives me the most crazy immediately when i wake up so if i'm dreaming i have these by the way my dreams are brilliant genius yeah. <laughs> i could solve like all the problems of the world while i'm sleeping you know then <laughs> I, and then i wake up well, you, I, you, you're, you're a politician then okay because yeah. they're, they're all sleeping <laughs> yeah i wake up and i'm like that was so awesome i just had a great idea for a movie i saw everything in my mind and it, the, the when you wake up it all starts to like flush away you gotta keep so a far. journal that's why you have a journal next to the bed <laughs> Yeah, but some people have 
<laughs> journal, some yeah. people have guns. Yeah, the, right, right. the brain is up, but the hands aren't working necessarily yet. You know, those yeah. kinds of things. I think, like, what I do a lot is take a lot of notes on my phone. Yeah, that's what I do. That's yeah. Smart. I wish you could tell Siri to take notes from the shower. That would help. But, <laughs> yeah, it would. Yeah. But right she, in the rain pad. Yeah, a rain pad probably would help. But, <laughs> yeah, every time I try to tell Siri to take notes, she's like, you got to unlock me first or something. Something crazy uh, yeah. like that, you know? So <laughs> it's like, what is the point of this technology? Um, yeah. Let's see. There's some questions for you here. If you guys have questions, let me know here. I'm going to start going through this. Uh, Len Holt says, how does he handle hecklers? Hecklers? I don't get a lot because I'm very... Yeah, a very uh, large presence on. Stage. Yeah, I was gonna say because you're six seven and, and Sasquatch. Is that why you're being so you're serious? Like, you're like, don't even try yeah. to heckle me, dude. I'm gonna crack your skull. You give me some crap. This yeah. might surprise some people. Um, when it comes to hecklers, so people see those, those heckler videos online mm -hmm. of hecklers getting destroyed by comedians, right? Mm -hmm. They're like super viral. A lot of them. It's kind of like cops. Like you see the ones that went great. A lot of the time, it doesn't go well because someone who's like heckling you at a comedy show a lot of times it's just a drunk idiot mm -hmm. and no matter what you say they're just going to keep just saying stuff yep. and unless someone kicks them out like you, it's just hard to win so a lot of times you want to deflect you know so some guy's like you're telling a joke and he's like ah that's not true you're like oh this guy really knows what he's talking about doesn't he you know they just kind of like yeah. just something to kind of deflect you don't if you attack them then they feel attacked and they have to come back at you. But if you can kind of deflect and move on, especially if you're getting a laugh, mm -hmm. then it's like it's too loud in there for them to say anything. So it's just kind of you want to stick and move. Uh, if someone is just really being rude, like say something funny, you know, then then you kind of have to like, you know, go in and trash their appearance or something like yeah. that. Yeah, well, but, they say, say something funny. What's your name? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's, it's it doesn't happen very often. Yeah. It all seems, it all probably seems easy until you get up on that stage. And oh, then, God, and then you just... Have to do it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Even doing, like, YouTube. Doing YouTube, uh, what we're doing right now, or the videos that we all do, right? That's completely different from getting up in front of a crowd. Yeah, it is. In some ways, it can be harder. You know, like, uh, like with stand-up, it's like you have such an immediate feedback as soon as you say something you can just feel how the audience reacted to it without even hearing them mm -hmm. you know do anything it's just like this weird, if you've ever been up in front of a bunch of people mm -hmm. you just feel mm -hmm. how people are feeling it's really strange yeah, yeah. Uh, but on youtube it's like no you know you, just, you don't get anything yeah. until you post the video so it's like yeah it's hard yeah on YouTube, you know you're awesome until you look until you're going to edit that video. <laughs> yeah. You got five. Yeah. You got five views. Yeah. 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 When, That's when one people... reason maybe like I, go ahead. I thought stand up would like help me with like being on camera and stuff, and maybe a little bit, but mm -hmm. like in a way it almost makes it harder because it's like I just feel like I'm bombing the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Doing, you, know? you have no feedback. Yeah. 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 It's it is it's a completely different experience when you have to get up uh, in front of people and do it. So Elfsters Rifles and Reloading says this. Uh, he says Joe Rogan recommends getting really really high. Laugh out loud. Gun guys can't do that. Can't do that. Yeah. 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 That's not an option for the gun folks out there. Right. No, they can't. Yeah. Yeah. So they, also, uh, some of my friends who do that, they say it doesn't actually make you as good as you think it would on oh, stage. See, that's like I'm I'm like way more attractive when I'm drunk, of course. In, <laughs> right. In yeah. reality, it's not, never the case. Yeah. Just blubbering idiot. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Like completely uh, sober. Maybe like I like to have. I'll have like a beer if I'm doing a show. I'll have a beer or something just to kind of keep my, mm -hmm. you know, just have something to drink. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I like to be just basically sober you know yeah I'm, I'm i know that there's probably a lot of rock stars and all, all kinds of different entertainers that make it look like drugs somehow uh foster your creativity the reality is no so like when i used to do hip-hop music um i remember guys coming to record in the studio they're supposed to be great rappers and they're like taking drugs or whatever and then can't do anything it makes you impotent Creative, can't remember creative. their lines. Yeah. Well, they can't think of anything. They can't be. I think a lot of creativity comes from pain and suffering and all those kinds of things. And probably comedy has something to do with that. I don't know what you think about that, John. Yeah. Well, I know Doug Stanhope used to say uh, something like, you know, Doug Stanhope is a comedian. I've, I've heard that like, name. Yeah, Stanhope. Well, he would say, he, this is just his his, his process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he would say, uh, 
Uh, I write stoned, I edit with cigarettes, and I perform drunk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it died young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's still alive somehow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Stan Hope, I think well, I hear it. about him on Rogan. Yeah, look at yeah. Belushi, you know. Mm-hmm. He's an Belushi alcohol. was like, you yeah. know, uh, 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 one of those co- comedic geniuses, I guess you'd say. Yeah. Um, but a little bit too much, uh, a little bit too yeah. much uh, yeah. fun. So, yeah. That's something I've learned being on the road is like, it, you got to be. Uh, can't just be like getting drunk every night. It's got to be sustainable, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Right. Like Chris Farley and all these guys. It's it's such a long haul, and if you want to make a career out of uh, show business, you gotta you gotta be sustainable. Yeah, I think it's also um, more difficult now as well. Um, yeah. To because there's so much more competition and things like that. So there's one thing of having the talent and the skills, and then there's the hard work, and then there's also the hustle that has to go into that. And I think if you're getting into yep. a lot of these things, you could be the most talented person. You won't necessarily last that long. That's There's lots of talented people leaving the world because of all the drugs and things like that they're doing. And then other parts of yeah. their life spin out of control. Yeah. Yeah. The you got to have the balance. Absolutely. Like being good isn't enough. Like I, I've known so many people uh, in comedy that are very, very funny people, but they don't they don't work. They don't like go out of town and do shows and they don't like promote themselves it's like. It's not like the 50s. Some guy, the fat guy with a cigar isn't going to like show up in the back of your show. Ah, like, Mr. Big, that's yeah. Mr. Big. You're the man yeah, now. for you, son. <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah, like that anymore. That yeah, but... Yeah. You, mean, you, mean, you mean it's not like uh, uh, Wayne's World? Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. And that's not necessarily a good thing. If someone makes you, they could break you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. You got to remember my, that. My plan is... I, a lot of this probably got derailed because of everything being uh, canceled, but I'm planning on, uh, was, and maybe still am, I don't know, planning on putting out, I'm calling it a micro special. Okay. That I'm going to put out, it's going to be like seven minutes of material that I'm going to have uh, professionally recorded. Um, mm-hmm. And I was planning on putting it out at the end of the year, mm-hmm. but we'll see what happens. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. When, uh, when, when you do that, let us know. Okay, Walter is apparently over here. Um, saving uh, up all is, his okay, paper this, for this, the. This was from a box of wolf. This is from a box of wolf yeah. ammo. So okay. the wrapper on yeah. the outside, a little more user friendly, I think. Yeah, you're gonna get Russian AIDS from that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I took the staples out. You gotta be careful. You might get a staple. Hook yeah, your listen, that stuff is like sandpaper, Walter. <laughs> well, uh, you know. You're have Cosmoline. Yeah, how smooth do you need yeah. your butt to be? <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Whatever. Walter yeah, is trying to do it. his part. Walter's trying to do his part. Um, That's comedic, right? That's funny, right? Come on, come yeah. on, laugh. See, laugh. Um, I think, as you can see, everyone wants to be a comedian. Everyone wants <laughs> well, to be a comedian. That's how you get the ladies. Well, you know, the funniest people aren't comedians. That's the that's the truth of it. Really? Stand-up comedians are just people who are funny that work the hardest. Like, the funniest people are people who are not comedians. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so- I see. Actually, I stole this gimmick with the toilet paper from some other, somebody else on the internet, actually. Oh, see that, Walter? <laughs> another gun person already posted stuff. Like that me. is the worst thing to do in comedy, to steal other people's jokes. Yeah. Well, if, if they don't, if, if nobody knows who they are, who's, who they are, then, right, does it matter? Yeah. <laughs> it'll wind right? up. It'll right? wind up. Know, I'm telling you, I've got friends, and I know them. They are comedy nerds out there like you wouldn't believe. They know every yeah. joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Comedian. You never saw that video of Joe Rogan, uh, who was it? Carlos Mencia? Carlos Mencia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Walter never Walter yeah, his, didn't see that. His name, is, his name is Mud now. Yeah. Stealing jokes. No, <laughs> that's no good. That's just like in hip hop, biting somebody's lines. No, no, no. Yeah. Don't steal someone's lines. You also can't have a ghostwriter, apparently, but, you know. You should do, like, what you have to do in hip hop now is what the mumble rappers do. Just mumble stuff, and you don't, no, no, you don't no, have to write. No. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to do it right now. Listen, when you so when you do that, um, are you going to put that out on on your YouTube? It's going to go on the main TikTok channel. Oh, oh, it's going to go on the main oh. channel. Okay, awesome. Yeah, it's going to be mostly gun material. Oh, cool. Yeah. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.